Hi, I'm Dr. Sakib, and uh, this is the topic, anterior triangle of neck. So we first of all studied the head, its uh, osteology, all the various aspects of the osteal normals, the mandible, cervical vertebra, and then the face uh, with the various aspects of vessels, and the nerves, and the muscle of the facial expression, all that. And uh, then we studied the uh, neck, one aspect was the lateral aspect of the neck, lateral cervical region, and the lateral triangle of neck was that, and now is changing the anterior triangle of the neck, interior cervical region, it's focusing on the interior triangle of neck. So, what is that region? You could see here that the anterior boundary is formed by the median line of the neck, and posterior boundary formed by the anterior border of the sternocleidomastoid. And the superior boundary formed by the inferior border of the mandible. Apex is located at the jugular notch in the manubrium. And is a roof formed by the subcutaneous tissue containing the platysma. And the floor is formed by the pharynx, larynx, and thyroid gland. And you see this picture. And it tells uh, the story about these uh, various uh, aspects uh, of the triangle of the neck. So this is the area where it shows the various triangles. And uh, this is, you know, this is the anterior uh, median line over here. This is this is interior median line, right? And uh, this is the sternocleidomastoid. This is the sternocleidomastoid. So the anterior to the sternocleidomastoid is the anterior cervical region, the anterior triangle of neck. And the area posterior to that sternocleidomastoid is the lateral cervical region or the posterior triangle of the neck, which has been discussed in detail and the video uploaded for you people, the posterior triangle. So the focusing on here is the anterior triangle of the neck. The boundaries are enlisted in the uh, preceding um, page. And here you could see as well, what is that? You could see this, this area, this anterior median line and upper this boundaries of the anterior cervical region. This is anterior is the anterior median line. Upper is the base of the mandible and the line extended up to the um, um, of the mastoid process. And uh, then here, this is the posteriorly anterior border of the sternocleidomastoid. And uh, then uh, this is the apex. This was the base, the mandible base. And this apex is at the jugular notch, the, above the minibrium sterna. So you could just see uh, in a more elaborate form, this, this is various regions. This is uh, anteriorly, this is uh, sorry, posteriorly is the anterior border of the our sternocleidomastoid. This is sternocleidomastoid, and its interior border forms a posterior boundary of the anterior triangle of the neck. And anteriorly is the anterior median line. You can see superiorly is the mandible base. Apex is at the jugular notch, right? So this is the main boundaries of the uh, uh, your um, anterior triangle. So you see this triangle is subdivided by two muscles, which is the omohyoid, right? And the stigastric, it divides into four parts, which are, you know, uh, submandibular or digastric, submental, right? This is submental is single in the median plane. Rest are two on the each side, like this is a submandibular. Then it's a carotid triangle, very important carotid triangle due to the presence of the carotid vessels in that common carotid artery in its branches. And one is the muscular of the omotracheal triangle. This is the four resulting from the uh, divisions of the uh, this uh, main um, interior triangle, which is divided by two muscles, which are our uh, digastric and omohyoid. So digastric and omohyoid. See, already I told you, and you could see this is C, which is muscles. So it's our uh, digastric and omohyoid. I told you already. Yes, this is the digastric. This is labeled over here. This is two bellies, interior and posterior. And then this is omohyoid. The inferior belly was coming from uh, uh, that uh, posterior triangle, which we're dividing it into two. That is discussed already. And this is a superior belly. This divides it into four subdivisions. This contribution to that along with the digastric. So first of all, we get the submental triangle. So you see the diagram. Uh, this is a simple submental. This you see. Submental diagram. So, what is that? This is submental diagram. That's a submental 
ट्राइंगल दिस इज सब मेंटल ट्राइंगल यू सी वन दिस इज एपेक्स इज एट द सिंफेसिस मेंटा दिस इज मेंडेबल एंड दिस इज द सिंफेसिस मेंटा सो दिस इज द एपेक्स ऑफ व्हिच इज फॉर्मड एट द सिंफेसिस मेंटा एंड बेस दिस इज व्हिच बोन द हाइड बोन सो दिस इज बेस इज दैट and the lateral borders are by formed by the anterior belly on each side and anterior belly of the digastric so this is a very simple uh, submental uh, triangle and uh, it's a uh, floor floor is formed by the mylohyoid muscle mylohyoid forms its floor with the median raphid this is median raphid joined in between by a median raphid is the two sides of mylohyoid on this side sided right sided Uh, this is right sided mylohyoid that this is left sided mylohyoid joined by the median raphid and contents of uh, submental uh, lymph nodes in this diagram shown are the very important submental lymph nodes submental lymph nodes and the very important vein is formed over the here it is the anterior jugular vein so this is uh, things to have uh, told uh, written over here here you could see again that uh, uh, that this is about to show you this is a mylohyoid muscle this is the mylohyoid you see this is a pointer moving and you see this is the mylohyoid muscle forming the it's the floor of the this submental triangle so all is a, this is a median line this is the symphysis menta and the floor is formed the floor of the mouth formed by mylohyoid muscle one muscle forming the floor of the mouth is a mylohyoid so as we move on so this i told you already its contents which again i reiterate re re anterior jugular vein so this is again a diagram uh, similarly as you see this is the mylohyoid over here in the median plane mylohyoid so this is the thing and uh, then we move to the next triangle so i told you this is a second triangle first anterior triangle i again i repeat is subdivided by two muscles the digastric and omohyoid into four subdivisions one is submental which is in the median plane only single not on both sides the single uh, in the median plane and the rest of uh, three are the uh, in pairs right and left so the next is a submandibular triangle so it's a glandular area why is glandular it contains a submandibular gland in it it is between the inferior border of the mandible and the anterior and posterior bellies of the digastric floor is formed by the mylohyoid and hyoglossus and the middle pharyngeal constrictor the submandibular gland it almost fills a triangle and you see the boundaries in this picture right you can enlarge it for you so here you can see yes you have So, you see, this is the submandibular triangle. Just you can remember one of the simple diagram, and you can trace the boundaries. This is submandibular, and above this is the base of the mandible. Anteriorly, you see the anterior valley of the digastric, and uh, posteriorly, uh, you could see this is the uh, your posterior valley of the digastric, and this is a thing. This is again you can study from that. This is the my uh, inferior border of the mandible and then anterior and posterior bellies of the digastric muscles they form the submandibular triangle and they contain of course a submandibular gland again you see this want to show you the this submandibular gland this is the submandibular gland these are also the submandibular lymph nodes over here and present in the triangle almost this triangle is almost filled by this submandibular gland we have we have another picture of the submandibular gland which is lying over here this this is the submandibular gland right in this in the this triangle and uh, this, then i wanted to show these muscle again this is the mylohyoid and also this hyoglossus mylohyoid and hyoglossus forming the floor is deed over here uh, that uh, mylohyoid and hyoglossus muscle uh, formed the floor of the submandibular triangle along with the middle pharyngeal constrictor so this was the uh, story of that uh, two muscles forming the floor so then we move on and uh, 
continuing uh, to talk about the hypoglossal nerve, right? It provides motor innervation to intrinsic and extrinsic muscles of the tongue. When you study tongue, I will uh, inshallah, teach you the tongue and its nerves by as well. So motor nerves like tongue musculature, you see, hypoglossal, the 12th cranial nerve. It passes into the submandibular triangle as a nerve to the mylohyoid. Nerve to the mylohyoid, which is a branch of the cranial nerve. V3, of course, this is a trigeminal, which part? The mandibular nerve. Also splice the interior belly of the digastric, parts of the facial artery vein and the submental artery, which is a branch of the facial artery. And you see it's very clearly uh, seen in this picture moving on. Yes, you, you, you could see. This is wanted to show you. This is the facial artery with the contents of the submandibular triangle. This is the facial artery. Then the submental artery, submental branch of the facial artery. So then the third is a nerve to mylohyoid coming from the mandibular vein of the trigeminal nerve. Nerve to mylohyoid. So this is the thing. And this is the digastric and the nerve to digastric as well coming from the our uh, mandibular. And uh, these are the things I wanted to uh, share with you and uh, tell you the present in the this area, the submandibular triangle. And uh, then again, you can see hypoglossal nerve as well in this hypoglossal nerve. And uh, you can have to find the hypoglossal nerve in this area. And uh, you see, uh, the, it's quite visible over here. So it's moving on. So in the next, so it is very clear in this hypoglossal nerve is here. This is a very large cranial nerve coming in down here. This is the hypoglossal nerve supplying the muscle of the tongue of eventually. Motor nerve supply, extrinsic and intrinsic muscle of the tongue, which we will learn later on. So then the law of very, very important carotid triangle. Maybe it's uh, in my opinion, rather it is true. It is most important of this area, the carotid triangle due to the presence of the presence of the common carotid artery and its terminal branches driven to the um, uh, external and internal carotid arteries, of course, which has the carotid sinus and the carotid body, carotid sinus and the carotid body. body. So carotid triangle is bounded by the superior belly of the omoid, posterior belly of the digastic, and the interior border of the sternocleidomastoid. And you can see the, from this picture again, it's just very uh, useful picture. And uh, again and again, I'm showing you uh, the concepts from here. No need to memorization, just draw this picture and you will uh, learn all this. This is the carotid triangle, right, you see? As you see, this is in front. What is that? Superior belly of Omohai. This you could see. And above, what is that? This is the posterior belly of digestive. Right, you see? And posteriorly is the interior border of the sternocleidomastoid. So this is the boundaries of the carotid uh, triangle. And <clears throat> so, of course, contains a common carotid artery. And uh, which can be palpated against the cervical vertebra. So I have to tell you about the carotid sinus and the carotid body. What is carotid sinus? It's a dilatation of the proximal part of the internal carotid artery, which may involve the common carotid artery, right? It is innervated principally by the glossopharyngeal nerve, the ninth cranial nerve through the carotid sinus nerve. As well as by the vagus nerve, the tenth cranial nerve, it is the baroreceptor, pressure receptor, pressure receptor, pressure receptor that reacts to changes in the arterial blood pressure. It reacts to changes in the arterial blood pressure. So here you can see, I've told you this was a carotid sinus. S means it's concerned with pressure. ASP, ASP concerned with pressure, blood pressure mainly. So this is the carotid sinus. This is the dilatation at the start of the internal carotid artery as it stems from the division of this common carotid artery. So next is the, uh, where this, uh, this was the carotid sinus and then this is the carotid body. What is, you see this carotid body. What is that? It's a small reddish brown or white mass of tissue in, in life that lies in the septum on the median or the deep side of the bifurcation of the common carotid artery in closer relation to the carotid sinus. 
Uh, this is also spread by the uh, cranial nerve 9, glossopharyngeal and the cranial nerve 10, vagus nerve. Which it is a chemo receptor. That was the pressure receptor, carotid sinus, and the carotid body is a chemo receptor that monitors the level of oxygen in the blood. It is stimulated by the low levels of the oxygen and initiates a reflex that increases the rate and depth of the respiration, cardiac rate, and blood pressure. So that is the pressure receptor. It senses changes in the oxygen. Uh, for example, in the blood, and uh, so it uh, can decrease or increase the rate of respiration, heart rate, and blood pressure as well. So uh, the carotid triangle contains, of course, carotid sheath that I have discussed with you in detail in my lecture on the fascia poli, the deep cervical fascia, carotid sheath, and its content. You can go and devise there, right? So that's the point. So this is the thing and uh, going on uh, with this, uh, this is you could see here, these are the, our this common carotid artery, it's real into, this is a common carotid artery dividing into the external and internal carotid artery alongside onsa cervicalis, so these various, and the internal jugular vein. So these structures are present in the carotid sheath. It's the modification of the uh, fascia coli. Then it's the last uh, triangle, it's the muscular triangle. It is bounded by the superior belly of the homoid, interior border of the sternocleidomastoid, and the median vein of the neck. This contains uh, infrahyoid muscles and viscera. And these were all, uh, for example, thyroid and the parathyroid glands. So you see from uh, this diagram again, coming back to the diagram, yes, and uh, again. See, this is the muscular triangle. It's embedded in between this muscular. This is the uh, superiorly the superior belly of the homoid. Anteriorly is the sternohyoid, and uh, posteriorly the uh, anterior border of the sternocleidomastoid. So this is the muscular triangle, also known as the homotracheal triangle. You could yeah, this contains infrahyoid muscle. This is the hyoid bone. And the muscles below uh, to that are the infrahyoid muscles. Like I will tell you in detail, but these are the sternohyoid, for example, or the homohyoid, right? So muscle in the anterior cervical region are the, uh, the hyoid is, provides attachment also to the suprahyoid muscle and uh, below to the infrahyoid muscles, right? So these hyoid muscles steady or move the hyoid and larynx. And for descriptive purposes, so divided into suprahyoid and infrahyoid muscles. So there are attachments, innovation, actions, and uh, that is presented in the table. This is a table, right? So this is, you can go through bilohyoid, tenohyoid, stylohyoid, and digastric. These four are the suprahyoid muscles. These are the Suprahyoid muscles. And uh, then the sternohyoid, homohyoid, sternothyroid, and thyrohyoid, these are the Infrahyoid muscles. This is the mylohyoid, right? So this is the nerve to mylohyoid splice there. Tenohyoid spread by the C1 via the hypoglossal nerve, cranial nerve 12. Stylohyoid, the stylohyoid, uh, which is a part of the facial nerve pi part. And the digastric anterior belly and posterior belly has separate nerve splice due to its different origin from the pharyngeal arches. Anterior belly comes from first pharyngeal arch spread by the uh, uh, our mandibular um, uh, branch, alveolar nerve, nerve to mylohyoid, and uh, the second comes from the second pharyngeal arch, posterior belly, so it's spread by the facial nerve, digastric or preperotid branch. So uh, the infrahyoid are the sternohyoid, homohyoid, sternothyroid, and the thyroid muscles. So this is their origin, of course, correspondingly. And uh, of course, these are uh, secondarily there to come is the higher, attached ultimately to the higher bone. 
So then uh, uh, the reactions, uh, the nursery, this is the sterno hyoid and omo hyoid steroid, but the C1 into C3 by branch of the answer cervicalis and sterno thyroid by C2 into C3 by branch of the answer cervicalis and thyro hyoid at the C1 via hypoglossal nerve, cranial nerve 12. Then the main actions are uh, to stabilizing the hyoid bone. The elevation is done by mainly suprahyoid muscle and depression uh, done by the infrahyoid muscle. And uh, with the hyoid also involved in the larynx as well. We depress the infra the larynx as well to help produce swallowing and speaking. They assist in swallowing and speaking, articulation. So these are the suprahyoid muscles. Is four told you this. You can go through this chart, and this is the infrahyoid muscles. For detail, I told you already. With the precise attachments, you have to revise the anatomy of the hyoid bone, the various parts, body, great carnu, lips of carnu, and the attachments to this origin and insertion of the muscle. Then it will be easier for you. So this was the um, the infrahyoid muscles are also called as. What? Strap muscles. Yeah, they look like a strap. I showed you in the picture. They burn like a penis. So these four muscles anchor the higher right? And the sternum clavicle is the scapula to the, uh, depress the higher and the leg during swallowing and speaking. I told you like the, you know the from first year knowledge that the, um, um, one of the muscle homohyoid is attached to the scapula. They also work with the suprahyoid muscles to steady the higher providing a firm base for the tongue. So, super, so infrahyoid muscles are in a superficial plane and in a deep plane. Superficial plane is a sternohyoid and the omohyoid. The deep plane is a sternothyroid and the thyrohyoid. So uh, the omohyoid, I told you two bellies and the digest to the two bellies. This is mentioned, given in that table as well. So I uh, thank you very much for this. It stop my today's discussion and uh, we'll see you in the next topic surely. Uh, as uh, I would like to take on the thyroid gland with you, inshallah, and wish you the best of luck. Thank you very much.